people in Japan have been wrestling with the consequences of using nuclear power ever since last year's accident at Fukushima Daiichi. They've focused on the safety of the country's 50 reactors. They've also debated the future use of atomic energy. Now there are concerns about the byproduct of the nuclear process, highly radioactive waste. NHK has learned top scientists are going to urge the government to rethink its final plan disposal for this waste. We've obtained a draft proposal by the Science Council. Right now, utilities store the waste in stainless steel containers. They're about a meter long and almost half a meter wide. Each one weighs half a ton. The government says there are approximately 235,000 of them in all. The nuclear waste inside is a glass-like liquid, so it's solid. Because of its dangerous nature, it needs to be stored away from people and the environment. Decided on its final disposal plan, 12 years, crews would bury the uh, waste deeper than 300 meters underground for tens of thousands of years. But members of the Science Council are questioning that idea. Their draft proposal says science has its limits and that Japan's frequent earthquakes and active volcanoes make it difficult to identify areas underground that would stay stable for such a long period of time. Wow. But the, the problem at this point is not really figuring out what the cause of the, the explosion is, but w where in the world is, is the, the melted nuclear material that is in the, the plant right now? Uh, but un unfortunately, we, we have no way of, of uh, figuring this out. If it was, a, for example, a coal power plant, uh, at this point we would be able to go in and, and touch the material and look at it more closely and figure out what's going on, but um, that's not the case with this kind of power plant. Uh, but because the, the, the plant is a nuclear plant, we can't go in and we can't take a look and we have to, there's nothing we can do at this point. Um, and the gentleman who said that uh, we can't call this an accident is absolutely true. Um, it's not an accident. Uh, it was something that was absolutely predictable. But even though it was predictable, there was nothing, to, nothing done in order to uh, measure what the consequences would be or anything of that matter. <coughs> Uh, so, like I said, w w we have no idea where the melted nuclear core is at this point. And I just want you to imagine uh, the, the core is made out of uh, ceramic. Uh, it's the same material that you use at home with your plates and cups and things like that. Uh, and can you imagine, can you melt that with, uh, by adding heat to it? Uh, that stuff you can't uh, melt unless you have 2,800 Celsius of heat uh, uh, put to it. They're, they're saying that it indeed melt, and the, the amount of materials that are in there, the ceramic material, isn't just like one plate or one cup like you have at home, but it's a hundred tons of it. So this 100 tons of uh, ceramic material melted, coated, and the vessel that, that it rests in is made out of steel, and that of course melts with, with that kind of temperature, so it fell through that too.
So where did the melted material go there? It fell into the, the containment uh, vessel. And what is that made of? Also steel. But what TEPCO has been telling us is that underneath that steel, there's also a, a, a floor of cement, and that cement hasn't melted yet. But it's not as if TEPCO has gone there and seen if this is the case or anything like that. It's basically ba based on uh, calculations that they claim to have worked out that way. But I don't believe it for one second. There's at least a possibility that it's gone through uh, all of it and, and leaked into the, uh, into the ground. Uh, when something like that happens, there's a strong possibility that it leaks into the environment and, of course, into the ocean that's, that's right there. And I've been advocating since late, uh, last May that uh, a big wall be built underground to prevent that from uh, entering the, the rest of the environment. I actually really hate politics, um, but I've, I've approached uh, uh, several politicians about this and, and convinced them that this is actually something that's very necessary. But uh, unfortunately, neither TEPCO or the Japanese government has uh, moved on, on this proposal. Uh, that's really all I know at this point. Uh, I really hope that uh, something is done so that the material doesn't spread to the, the greater environment, and I'm going to do all I can do to uh, prevent that from happening. ashore along the Alaskan coast. They believe a large part of the waste floated there after the tsunami last year in northeast Japan. A group called the Gulf of Alaska Keeper has been tracking its cleanup activities since June. The non-profit organization compared the amount of debris washed up this year with last year. Workers collected debris near the city of Anchorage. They say the quantity of waste had increased in four locations facing the Pacific. The amount at one location was four times higher. Members of the group say they found polystyrene foam as much as 39 times the amount found last year. They say many pieces of waste have Japanese writing on them. The group plans to provide the data to the U.S. government and the state of Alaska to help them develop measures to deal with the debris.